All right, hi, and welcome back. Attorney Steve Vondren. Hope you guys are having a great Sunday. I've been working on this video, a very timely video, and I had a little time to shoot it here today before the Dodgers Braves Game 7. Go Dodger Blue. That's Attorney Steve's team, by the way, Dodger Blue. I grew up a giant, giant Los Angeles Dodgers fan, even though I was drafted by and played by the, played with the, Cincinnati Reds organization, a little fun tip for you. Okay, so I hope you're having a great day. I wanted to talk about the top qualities of a Supreme Court justice. What does it take? Um, now, this is timely because we are talking about Amy Coney Barrett. Amy Coney Barrett has just been nominated by President Trump to fill the big shoes of the late Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, also known as R. GB, uh, RBG, Notorious Ruth Bader Ginsburg, RBG. So um, I want to talk here about the first thing is about Lady Justice. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about, do you see the um, set, the uh, what we call the scales of justice? Very famous. Uh, I think everybody's aware of it. And it's if you see the other side, it's with the lady with the blindfold. And there's also... Um, you know, she's partially, partially dressed kind of thing. And so I believe she was um, derived from a Greek, a Greek goddess kind of thing going way back into time. I'm not a total historian on this, but what I recall from law school was um, she was kind of a, a Greek god. And um, but I, I don't think most people really stop and think about it. Ruth Bader Ginsburg was um, one of the few women justices, and, and now Amy Coney Barrett is being nominated and uh, would literally just be one of a handful of women that have ever been on the Supreme Court. Um, we're talking a couple hundred years of existence here in the United States. So um, it's really interesting. So he, she has been nominated. There's, of course, some controversy. Should he be doing it now? Should the Senate be looking at this now? But um, the ABA has given their thumbs up of approval. We'll go over that in a second. But um, again, back to the uh, Lady Justice, she has a sword. Um, that is for respect and being ready to act, showing that, you know, some, and sometimes you'll see two-edged swords. Sometimes that's the way law is. You can go in thinking you're going to win and you come out with a defeat and uh, you end up paying their attorney fees. So law is a two-edged sword. You have the scales of justice. And to me, what that resembles is weighing facts, weighing competing interests, weighing public policy interests. So um, I just think this is really, and I hadn't really stopped to think about it until I picked was picking my picture for this um, video, and I said, Lady Justice. It's very interesting, isn't it? It's not a man, it's a lady. So let's go on, let's move on. This is from the Attorney Steve Legal Education Series. As you guys know, if you've been watching my channel, I like to provide some information, help people better understand the legal system. I consider it, consider it to be a professional obligation. Okay, so let's take a look. Um, to me, what are the great qualities that make a Supreme Court justice? They're the exact same qualities that make somebody a great person. Okay, so in this video, I'm going to talk about my two cents on what I think that is. In my experience working in the federal courts, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the ABA notes, and actually I'm going to show you the notes from the ABA and what their thoughts were, okay? And again, this is not an exclusive list, okay? My two cents, I've appeared in over 200 federal court cases. I absolutely love the federal courts compared to the state courts. No offense, but it's, it's to me, it's, it's fancier, it's more prestigious, it's more historical. Um, it's, you know, I get to deal with um, justices, uh, not justices, but judges that are appointed by judges, by uh, presidents, by United States presidents. They're the ones that appoint the federal judges. If you've been watching, Trump has appointed, I think, um, close to 300, maybe more in this term, just in the last um, four years. So um, these judges are appointed by the, by the president of the United States, whoever is the president. And they sit for life. They sit for life. So meaning you have, talk about tenure at your colleges, they have lifetime tenure. They sit for life unless there's, you know, some extremely weird bad behavior, but it's got to be a real high standard. Um, here are my, here is my list. I've got a few things here. 
Um, and again, before I go, uh, I want to talk a little bit about um, the confirmation hearing. So um, Amy Coney Barrett, and just some, I'd like to throw some background, some fun facts. She went to Notre Dame Law School. There's not a whole lot of Notre Dames. In fact, honey, didn't you say she was the first? She's the first. She's the first, going to be, if, if, if approved, of course, um, she's going to be the first Notre Dame law grad. And one thing that is interesting about uh, what Donald Trump has, has done that I have seen, and I have a video on Donald Trump's appointees, if you're interested in what kind of colleges he's appointing from, you can go look. But he's really opening up the field. Many times in the past, it has been Harvard Law, tons of Harvard Law, Yale, um, Ivy Leagues, you know, Columbia, different, different Ivy League schools. But Trump has really opened it up. I saw ASU. I think I saw um, uh, Brigham Young, BYU. So you see a lot of different now Notre Dame. A um, you know known as a Catholic school, so um, it's really interesting. Uh, number one on that, and I also wanted to point it out that Amy Coney Barrett clerked for another justice, Justin Antonin Scalia, the late the late great Scalia. So um, I found that to be interesting. I didn't know that until I really dug in and started doing some research for this video. But um, without further ado, let's talk about what I think the top qualities are, the top qualities of a person, a judge, um, and like a great lawyer as well. I think uh, this also applies to being a great lawyer for you law grads out there and, and, and other practicing lawyers. One, master of the laws. You got to know the laws. You got to be educated. You, um, like I said, you're always looking for, you got to have the JD degree. Sometimes you have the LLMs, which you can look at. Um, some people look at the LLMs, not required, but the master of the law, the substantive and the procedural aspects of law. And, you know, what are, you know, the different federal statutes because uh, federal judges interpret federal questions, okay, questions involving the Constitution many times. So being a constitutional scholar is, is ultimately important. Understanding the federal statutes is ultimately important. Procedure, the federal rules of civil procedure govern in, in federal cases. Knowing how a case gets from A to B, A to Z, um, so to speak, that's extremely important. So the substantive procedural, education, and like I said, um, fun fact for you I had on here, a fun fact in regards to education. To my knowledge, there was only one Supreme Court justice that turned down their Harvard admission. They were admitted to Harvard Law School and turned it down. Now, you don't hear too many people doing that. Can you guess who that was? Three, I know. two, what? I know. Who? Thomas. Ha! Frontline Lisi in the background, ladies and gentlemen, says Justice Clarence Thomas. She must have heard me talking about this. <laughs> Good for you, honey. Points for you. So, yeah, Justice Clarence Thomas. He was, uh, I believe, the second African-American judge. He was, he declined admission to Harvard Law School. Um, why? Because he went to Yale instead. So tough in that, tough in life, you have that tough decision. Oh, Harvard, Yale, what should I do? Tough decision in life. Uh, Clarence Thomas, just the great Justice Clarence Thomas, uh, chose Yale. Okay. So fun fact for you. I like to get some of these fun facts in there. And when I say again, mastering the laws, that's the constitution. Um, a lot of constitutional questions, the bill of rights, you know, separation of powers questions, things like that. You got to know the law, substantive procedure. Two, good listener. Okay. Uh, oh, by the way, uh, do you know who appointed Justice Clarence Thomas? Frontline Lisi's at it again. Who appointed, which president appointed Justice Clarence Thomas? George Bush. George Bush, everybody. She is correct. More points for you. Nicely done, Frontline Lisi. Um, all right. So, um, and again, a lot of times people think it's big law, the Ivy Leagues, but Trump is now opening that up to, you know, very well-established schools, and, and other candidates. So that's good. I think that's broadening the bench and the different experiences are coming in, okay? Um, two, what's it take to be a great Supreme Court justice? Good listener, good listener. Now you may say, and I always tell people, my dad used to say, hey, God gave you two ears and one mouth. That was not accidental. 
two ears, one mouth, maybe listen. <laughs> so um, good listener, listening to the facts, the issues, uh, listening to the parties, not interrupting everybody all the time, but hearing people out, giving them their day in court, as we like to call it, give them their day in court. Um, so being a good listener is what I've seen of federal court judges in my time in the courthouse. They're listen, they're, they're usually very thoughtful. They give you time to state your side of the case, their side of the case. Um, good listener, number two. And let's see, number three, impartiality. Now this is the lady justice, that's why I spent some time talking about it. Lady justice is supposed to be blind, not subject to political influence, not subject to financial interests. You know, let's face it, uh, all, the, all the federal judges, let's face it, probably have a stock portfolio that's pretty substantial in most cases. But to be blind to influence, uh, to recuse yourself when, you know, to avoid the appearance of impropriety, let's call it. But to be blind and not to do this. Hey, who's that over there? Is that Microsoft? Is that AT&T? Who's in the court? Blind. In other words, listen to the facts, the law, apply it evenly, fairly, based on legal precedent, okay? Um, again, avoiding the appearance of impropriety. Nonpartisan, okay? So we all know, and this is a big thing, is we all know that a lot of cases come down from the Supreme Court five to four. That's why it's important we have another justice appointed. Now the business of the court has to go on. But um, being partisan and saying, okay, you know, maybe I'm this way or I'm predisposed this way to put your, your, put your own biases and your own prejudices and your own, not that they have prejudices, but their own uh, partisan interests or whatever, to keep all that aside and to apply the law as it is, as it is written the best that you can without making law of law. A lot of people like to criticize federal judges saying they're making law. That's the province of the legislative branch. So, um, but being impartial, I think is extremely important. And I have by and large found that to be the case. Um, four, thoughtful and deliberate. Okay, what does that mean? That means willing to hear all the arguments, um, researching and applying the law. If this fly comes on the camera, it's going to be funny. Researching and applying the law, applying that legal precedent, and not rushing to judgment. Okay, so thoughtful and deliberate. I like the federal courts. I think that they're, they take their time. They have law clerks. Okay, they research the law. They're very strict on applying the law. And you see that in federal court. At least I see it. And I've, by the way, I've litigated a ton in state courts of California and Arizona. Uh, and I still do a little bit, but I prefer that we do the copyright cases. That's what we're, we're known for, our copyright uh, practice, but, um, which is exclusive federal jurisdiction. But thoughtful and deliberate, thinking things through, explaining their rationale. Okay, so that I think is very important. Um, that's number four. Number five, this is what RBG, notorious RBG they called her. She was notorious for her dissent. And I'm going to do a video. You're going to want to bookmark my page. I'm going to do a video on dissenting um, and what it means, basically not agreeing with the majority and explaining why. And there's an old saying that today's dissent can become tomorrow's law, and it frequently does happen. So not being afraid to dissent, having the courage and the fortitude to do what the law demands, okay? Um, six, thoughtful and deliberate. I repeated that, didn't I? <laughs> well, you, would, you know how important that is, okay? Um, so I don't accidentally uh, repeated that one. Attorney Steve made a mistake. Um, and let's go through here. Actually, I think that one was, no, well, let's just skip it. Hey, sometimes you make a mistake. Um, so skip it. Number seven, people person people person. Now you may say, well, I always see pictures of the Supreme Court judges and they're always kind of sitting here like, you know, sitting back just doing this or whatever. But they are people persons, um, people people. If you watch their videos, I love to go and watch videos of justices speaking at law schools, for example. It's, it's great. Like it's free education. It's on YouTube. You can't beat it. So, uh, but they're people person. They're, they're, they have to 
be people that get along with their colleagues. You have eight other justices, you have to get, get along with them. And a lot of times you will see these justices are like, they can fight and disagree in, on, on the law and the process procedure, but they generally are collegial toward each other, okay? And collegial towards their law clerks. One of the things I liked about Clarence Thomas, I recently watched a video on him, he was talking about how what he loves the most in his in his day-to-day -day activities is his law clerks. He has four law clerks, and he says, I love them like kids. And that's pretty cool, and you have to be a people person to do that. Now, he says he's very demanding, and he, he does not like excuses. He does not like errors. He does not like mistakes. He doesn't like misspellings, things like that. He wants a thorough, complete job, but a people person. And I am sure that his clerks love him back the way he loves him. So being a people person and judges, you know, um, I don't know if you know, but judges go out and they do a lot of talking, public speaking. They teach at colleges and things like that, scholarly things. So it requires a people person. Okay. Um, so that's number seven. I don't know what happened to six. Sorry about that. <laughs> Um, and number eight, finally, number eight, I guess is number seven, actually, instills public confidence. This is so important. We want to have, this is, okay, Supreme Court is the court of last resort. It is the highest court in the land, okay? You don't get in unless they agree to hear your case on a writ of certiori. There's some other minor exceptions where they have to hear it, but writ of certiori, and I have a video on that attorney, Steve Ritt of certiori. I should have wrote it down here, sorry. Um, but um, instilling public confidence, having respectful, thoughtful decisions, hearing people out, giving them their day, applying the law, explaining why we should diverge or stay, explaining why we should stay the course or how this, this case differs from that case, you know, things like that but instilling the public confidence. And one thing that you'll note about Supreme Court justices that's different from politics and lawyers and everything else, do you ever hear about a scandal involving a Supreme Court justice? You really don't. Um, you really don't. And because this is, to me, this is why I'm in the judicial side of the, the, the government, if you will, um, it has to instill confidence. Now, every now and then you'll hear a scandal about a judge, like a state court judge or... Uh, maybe a federal court judge here and there, but Supreme Court, I can't remember. Frontline, since you're answering all the questions right, do you remember any Supreme Court justice scandals? I don't. Never. Never, she said. So, um, but anyway, instilling the public confidence, um, earning the respect that's required from such a high office. And how is that done? One of the things I liked is being virtuous. Being virtuous, what does that mean? Frontline, do you know what that means? Uh, like truthful. Okay. Truthful? Okay. Yes, being truthful, having a sense of justice and morality. Um, I have on my list here prudence, thoughtfulness, being stoic, um, having temperance. Okay, Supreme Court judges are great at this. Federal Court judges as well. Temperaments, having just great temperament, thoughtful, and so... A federal court judge has to have those skill sets. Um, I just outlined what I think are the most important things here. Now, I made this list before I saw the ABA and what they had to say about um, Amy, uh, just the nominee, uh, just the proposed Justice Barrett, I should call her. Um, so let's go take a look and see what they have to say. ABA ranks nominee, the, now they have a committee that ranks the Supreme Court justices. You know, they do an, an independent analysis, nonpartisan, as they call it. Let's keep the politics out. Let's just do analysis. Here are some of their comments. So you heard mine, and let's see if any of mine line up. I actually haven't even read these until I posted them in here, so I'm reading these for the first time. Um, Barrett is incredibly honest and forthright. Frontline, I think you just said that with virtuous. She's exactly who you think she is. So to me, it's transparent, it's non-phony, and nothing about her is fake. She is good, decent, selfless, and sincere. Obviously, these are good qualities if you want to be a judge, a federal court judge, state court. I think even a lawyer, of course. Um, a casual observer might think that she sounds too good to be real, but she is very genuine. There's another word, genuine. Barrett is an exemplar of living an integrated life in which her intellect, integrity and compassion 
weave the different threads of her life together seamlessly. Those are some great words. Compassion, integrity, another great word. Um, there's so many words we can use. Um, second, the committee found that Barrett's professional competence exceeded the committee's high standards for Supreme Court nominees. That's a pretty high endorsement. ABA, by the way, American Bar Association, every lawyer should join. Um, this is not, <laughs> I mean, great information. Uh, all of the experienced, dedicated, and knowledgeable sitting judges, legal scholars, and lawyers who have worked with or against Judge Barrett had high praise for her intellect and ability to communicate clearly and effectively. No, I didn't say that, but that is very important. Communication, oral and written communication. And you can see here, um, obviously she's a people person. She got along with enough people that said, I like her, I like her. Okay, what else? From an early age, Judge Barrett's scholarship, that's our education number one, was evident. Award-winning top student, top of her class in college and law school, in addition to being executive editor of the Law Review. If you're in law school, you want to get on the Law Review. That's part of the thing. And you want to clerk for a judge. Gives you a chance to be a Supreme Court justice someday, right? Um, Barrett is whip smart, highly productive, punctual, and well-prepared. That sounds like organized. This is what I call my five Ps. Proper planning prevents poor performance. Say it again. Proper planning prevents poor performance. She's got that, it looks like, in spades. Uh, a brilliant writer and a thinker. That's what I talked about, being deliberate. She's also quite pragmatic. Um, that's what I consider to be quite you know, prudent, pragmatic, practical. She has a friendly, collegial, I said that, demeanor and is respectful of everyone. Respect, I didn't say that, but... Um, hearing people out as a form of respect. Judge Baird is an intellectual giant with people skills. It said that engaging warmth. The myth is real. She is a staggering academic mind. I wish they'd say that about me sometime. I do. <laughs> My wife does. If you can only reach one. Uh, finally, she was always willing to be helpful, engage with others. Helpful is great. Different, uh, even when she had a different philosophy and when she writes in dissent, she's very collegial. She, Barrett never raises her voice. That's the temperament. And there is no hint of sarcasm in her questioning. That's another good one. Um, not being sarcastic, not trying to take personal attacks, ad, ad hominem attacks as we call them. She's also a good listener. I got that on there. Barrett is kind, caring, and compassionate. She is extremely well liked by faculty and students universally. Uh, and she's demonstrated stellar judicial temperament. I got that word in there, all settings. She is often described as a good listener, got that, who makes time for people, whether they are students, law clerks, or friends. Okay, so uh, she's got the highest uh, well-qualified ranking. It's the highest ranking the ABA gets. Looks like she's in a, in a pretty favorable position to fill the big shoes of Ruth Bader Ginsburg, okay, the women's rights champion. Uh, and here you have it, and I'm going to leave you in these crazy times with a fun fact. Judge salary, how much do they make? I looked it up today, 260, 270,000. Chief Justice uh, makes the most. Not, not a whole lot more, though. $10,000 more. I've got some fun resources there for you. Oyes.org. Oye, oye. Dot org. You can go hear Supreme Court oral arguments. I do this every now and then if it's in a copyright case. I'll go listen to the oral arguments just to hear people using the language, see what the justices are asking. And SCOTUSblog.com. What does SCOTUS stand for? Frontline? Uh, notice? SCOTUS. I do not know. Supreme Court of the United States oh. blog. Supreme Courts of the United States blog. SCOTUS blog, another tremendous resource. Lots of great things. Um, I even stumped Frontline Lisi on that, which is always good. And I'm going to leave you with this great quote from Ruth Bader Ginsburg. And may she rest in peace. And thank you for all her tremendous service. I think it's very important in these times. She was a tremendous champion of women's rights. And um, I could go on about that. But I think this is important for our times now. Everybody wants to fight for something. It seems that we're with information media and social media. We all want to fight protesting and all this stuff. I think this is important what she said. Fight for the things you care about, but do it in a way that will lead others to follow you. Do it in a way that will lead others to follow you. What do you think of that front line? I think that's very impressive. 
fight for the things you care about. Do it in a way that will lead others to follow you. Okay, that's it. That's my show on Supreme Court. Good luck to Justice uh, Barrett. I'm sure she's not going to have any problems, as uh, far as I can tell anyway. Thanks for watching. If you like this, comment, subscribe, like. And um, who else is, who else, what other attorneys spending their time to bring you this kind of stuff? Nobody. So thanks for watching. I got to go. The Dodgers are on. Game seven. Go Dodgers. Come on, baby. Bring this home. Have a great day. Thank you guys for watching. We appreciate your viewership. And we'll be back. We got the, I know for some of my fans, you've been waiting for that whiteboard to come back. It's coming back very shortly within about the next 10 days. So stay tuned. Subscribe. You don't want to miss the future stuff. Bye now. Have a great Sunday. Take care.